Hi, welcome to Salem Family Ministries interview section. Mm -hmm. I'm Roman Salem and I have with me today someone who took time out of their busy schedule <laughs> who I never get to see, Charles Salem. And I honestly today I did want to ask you some questions that in ministry people ask you and they ask us when we're with you. So um, I'm just going to go through a couple of them. If you're okay. ready, we'll get rolling. All right. Um, so we're going to look at personal leadership. So you've been in the ministry 30 plus years mm -hmm. and you have a, a certain like discipline that you go through. So can you walk us through that? Well, it's a big deal, actually. Discipline is huge because what happens in longevity is if you're not careful, when you first get saved, you're so on fire. Mm -hmm. You're so excited. You're ready to read your Bible. You're ready to pray all the time. And then you get into life and life starts happening and you have a job and you have children and you get married mm -hmm. and everything seems to take your time and that discipline starts to slip away. It's happened to me, 38 years I've been doing this, and if I'm not careful, it'll happen today, it'll happen tomorrow, because it's so easy to get busy and not take the time, and you'll never have the time mm -hmm. to be disciplined. You make the time, you take the time. I don't do anything in the morning except get up and spend time with the Lord. And it's a discipline because emails are calling me and the mm -hmm. texts on my phone are calling me and now Facebook messages are calling me and, and I want to be with my family. But if I'm not with the Lord, I'm no good to my family. Mm -hmm. I have no answers that are worth anything for anyone giving me a prayer request. So I, that is important. And how do I do that? It's not a formula. It used to be mm -hmm. when I first started because I'm type A and I needed that formula. I thought I would read for 20 minutes. I would pray for 20 minutes or whatever. I had a formula. But after a time, and the Lord lets you get away with that yeah. for a season. <laughs> then all of a sudden he's like, you know what? I am not a step one, step two, step three program. I'm a relationship and mm -hmm. I want you to be in relationship. So then he starts developing your, yeah. your way of approaching him. Mm -hmm. And if you will actually do that, it keeps it interesting for you too, so that it doesn't become something rote that you're going through every day and you wind up after a period of months going and spending time with the Lord and thinking, I didn't, I didn't even feel him. I didn't even know he was here. Did I really hear anything? Mm -hmm. Or am I just coming up with this on my own? Everybody goes through that. So like you said, it would be like a relationship. And I look at it like when I first had a relationship with Stephanie. I would m like make time to go see her and it wasn't a chore but it was something I was like I, I need to do this because it's new I want to build on this right. but after years and years it became more integrated into my life right. it wasn't I make time it's just there is time That's right. so when I would watch you in the morning you'd be up and I'd be up later as a younger kid you know nine or ten and you have, would already have done your Bible since five mm -hmm. five to about eight and then you would start your life Right. But your life was already started at five right. because you had already integrated for so many years. And I think that's where people fall into that rut of, like you said in the beginning, well, my life is so busy. Your life is busy, but your relationship with Christ is your life. It is. And they need to see that it needs to be one, not just a Sunday, Wednesday night worship you know, relationship, it's a lifelong seven days a week, 24 hours a day relationship. Mm -hmm. So that being said, as your discipline, um, you're married to dad, mm -hmm. you know, so, and he's a good guy, kind of. So, <laughs> yes. um, he's amazing. But, so you, you're a leader, you're a powerful woman, you're a powerful speaker, and I'm not even going to put you in a gender, but you're a powerful speaker in the community, a leader. How do you lead in the spiritual realm and also know the role of, of wife, you know, love your husband, and vice versa. How do you guys really do that, and you personally? Well, in the beginning, I wasn't very good at it, mm -hmm. because when I married your dad, I was used to being uh, by myself, being my own lead, uh, running my own business, running my own mm -hmm. ministry, and then I married your your wonderful dad, who is a great husband. We've been married for 32 mm -hmm. years, but he um, is very, very strong, yeah. and I had never been around that in my entire life. And in the beginning, I felt very controlled. Mm -hmm. And of course, he and I talk about this in our marriage yeah. conferences. And I, I felt like he was controlling me. And coming from an abused background, I felt like he was abusing me when simply he was trying to protect me, help me, be a part of my life. I was not accepting that very well and didn't do it very well. And I, I took it to the Lord. I said, Lord, you've got to teach me yeah. because there's no way in my person, in my mind, 
or in any experience I've ever had from the past that I had any tools to work with. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any. So I went to the Father. Once again, that personal relationship with the Father okay. who wants us to succeed. Yeah. He wants us to succeed in marriage, in ministry, in life, as a family. Mm -hmm. he, his whole goal is for us to succeed. So I, I ran to my Father and I said, you have to teach me. And he showed me that the Holy Spirit would teach me how to know my position. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean... Um, we live in a society where women and men are equal. I mean, Jesus himself said there's neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, mm -hmm. male nor female. I mean, we're all equal in the spirit. But in the home, there has to be a, a, a set of orders, a priority level where the man leads. God mm -hmm. set this up in the New Testament. And the woman also leads, but she leads second command. And the Holy Spirit showed it to me this way, like the vice president. The vice president has power. Mm -hmm. She's not powerless. Mm -hmm. She's not without the ability to do things, but she's not the president. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, I can take that place. Mm -hmm. I can be that. And then I started studying it out in the Hebrew. And in Hebrew, father means strong leader of the house. And honestly, I don't care how strong or weak you are as a woman, every woman wants a man to be strong. Mm -hmm. And they want them to lead because we want somebody to follow. And then second, I studied out the word mother, and mother means strong water of the house. And so my position was to wash the house, to wash the, the children, to wash my husband, to wash myself with the word. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible talks about the water is the word. Yeah. The word is the water. Mm -hmm. And so it was my position to get up early in the morning. And some women would say to me, well, I'm so tired. Listen, if you will learn to spend time with the Lord, you'll get over being so tired. Yeah. Because there's a refreshing mm -hmm. in him. And if you have to get up an extra 30 minutes just to be with God, do it. I promise you the, the rewards will be so great. And you're planting a seed that God's going to give you a harvest. You'll get it in your own life. You'll get it in your energy. You'll, you'll be a better person. And somehow he redeems that time. Mm -hmm. You think you don't have it to give. And yet somehow he supernaturally makes it easier for you to do everything that you have to do that day. See, I like that, and I like how you said it does refresh you because you think you're going to be exhausted. Me, when I used to get up earlier and earlier, I'm like, I'm not going to have enough time in the day because I'm going to need a nap in the middle of the day getting up <laughs> right. this early. But reading your word, it gives you, and spending time with God gives you, it. your relationship with Him amplifies all your other relationships. So if you're having problems with your spouse, your children, your family outside of, of your married, or if you're single and you're watching this and you're in her family, when you spend time with your perfect relationship, the relationship with your Heavenly Father, it spreads that. It overflows you into your other relationships. So if you're having issues in there, it turns it around. You're happy with God. God's happy with you. You become happy with other people, and they see that in you, and they want to become like that. That's exactly right. So I've seen, I've seen that from you because you've always been happy. <laughs> even, even in the midst of a storm, you've really been happy, and I've seen that. So me, I've always been happy. Exactly. Even, even if my inner said, I'm, I'm not extremely happy today. I'd spend my time with the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. So it would be my happiness, and that's how we would turn it. And I saw that from you, so I want to impart that into my kids. Amen. And I, I'm really blessed that you could do that. You know, you, you brought up a very good point. Uh, so many times we, we don't understand that when we spend time with the Lord, and I used to say this to you guys as you were kids, if you will give me my time with the Lord, I'll be a better mom. Mm -hmm. I'll be a better wife. I'll be a better person. And I don't know what happens when you're with the Lord. I can't even explain it. But you become the best you you can mm -hmm. be when you spend time with God. You have the ability to be the best you, but you can't tap that person without spending time with God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like opens the door. Mm -hmm. So let's let's move on um, from our more, more personal to your... For you, it's not new because I know you've had it on your heart for a while. But your, your new... Your new conference, I would call it, your new gathering of women. So why don't you um, tell us what made you start it, give us the name, how God laid it on your heart, and how it came to fruition. Well, in the, in the beginning, uh, 20 years ago, I laid down our ministry doing women's conferences mm -hmm. uh, under the direction of the Holy Spirit. And um, the truth was, um, your dad and I, Harry and I, had just launched our ministry together as a couple. And I had been uh, such a strong women's leader, women's ministry leader, mm -hmm that people had a hard time accepting us coming together as a couple. Mm -hmm. And so the Holy Spirit said, uh, if you'll lay this down and give it to me as a seed, then I'll give it back to you at a higher level later. I had no idea later was gonna be 20 years. 
But what happened in that time was then that identity as just a women's mm -hmm. leader or a women's speaker uh, was laid down. And then I actually became a more overall minister to everyone. And a year ago, um, Harry came to me and he said he was coming out of prayer one morning and he said, it's time. And I said, time for what? And he said, it's time for you to start women's conferences again. And I was like, okay because in all honesty I had laid it down for him mm -hmm. and I thought it was like God to for him to be the one to come back and say it's time and I knew it was going to be at a higher level because that's what God had promised me 20 years ago that it would be at a higher level and so we picked a date and we found a hotel and we started doing the logistics of it and I literally had no real vision for it mm -hmm. when I started but much of what we do with God is just pure simple obedience when you first start, you don't have to have the whole book written. You don't have to even have the whole purpose or the mission statement. But if you'll just obey God and move, mm -hmm. just start. And when I started like that, I was a little nervous because I was not quite sure. I didn't want, and I said this in prayer every day, Lord, I just don't want to do another meeting for you. I don't want to just have another women's conference for yeah. you. Because I've been speaking at women's conferences all these years. We just hadn't had one from our ministry mm -hmm. support. And so... <laughs> I said, God, and so I just went into prayer every day, and I would just go before the Father and say, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And, and he gave me the, the title, Rise. And I didn't know if that would be every women's conference from mm -hmm. now on, or if it was just for this, this first one that we did. And so I knew Rise, I knew it would come from Isaiah 60, because that's the scripture God's used in my own life. Amplified Bible says, arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Mm -hmm. Rise to a new life. And many, many women are stuck in their circumstances because we are more soulishly in touch. We are more emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, we are more uh, hung to that side of us. Many times we get free from a situation, but we hang on to it. We yeah. hang on to the emotional broken place of it. And women tend to think that their identity is the sum of all their broken places. Okay. But one of the things that, that I make sure I tell women is I was abused and I was uh, crippled and I was scarred and I've had cancer four times and I've buried my daughter. But none of those broken places add up to who I am. Mm -hmm. That is not plus, 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 plus equals Cheryl. No, mm -hmm. I am in Christ and I operate from the power of Christ mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit within me. And learning my identity and, and being able to impart my identity to other women was part of what I knew God wanted me to do. Mm -hmm. So when I first began, that was my heart, was to get women set free. And when I took it to the Father and said, what do you want? He said, set my women free. So that was my first mandate from heaven. And I believe with our first conference, that was the first thing that we went after, was getting women not just free for a moment or for a weekend or for a conference and then them going back and just being who they were, mm -hmm. but learning how to stay free, how to live free, how to be free. So that was the first agenda okay. from the Holy Spirit, but it wasn't even close to all there was. Um, that was the first thing he gave me. But from there he began, and I shared this uh, so many times uh, with women. I felt like God just dumped a puzzle out in front of me with all the tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. And I felt like not a thousand piece puzzle, but a million piece puzzle. And I really didn't even know where to start. But I know with God, just start. Just start okay. looking for two pieces that fit together. And uh, we were in New York City in May and doing a Mother's Day weekend up there for Pastor Hernquist, uh, Pastor David and Mary Hernquist. And Mary had just been to a women's meeting over in New York City. And a lady there uh, was the sister of one of the founders of the NOW organization, the National Organization of Women. And she had, uh, this sister had gotten born again and filled with the Holy Spirit and she wanted to share some things she had learned almost 50 years mm -hmm. ago. She felt now was the time to reveal uh, what was behind the organization, the beginning of the organization. And when I say things like this, um, please don't take me wrong. Uh, I have no idea because I wasn't in these meetings. Mm -hmm. And I learned years and years and years ago, if you did not hear it firsthand, you really don't know yeah. what the truth is behind it. But the things that I heard did ring true in my spirit. Mm -hmm. And you have the Holy Spirit to help you discern what's right, what's true, what is the truth of a situation. And out of all the things that um, this sister revealed, the one thing I heard the Holy Spirit say was, 
reverse it because these women united and they had a voice. Mm -hmm. They had a long-term agenda and the agenda was the opposite of what I stand for. Okay. They, it was the opposite of righteousness and holiness and one of the main frame identities of their agenda was to destroy the American family as we know it mm -hmm. and to destroy the father position. Now, that part I do know is true. And so I won't go into the whole agenda, mm. but that was enough for me to know, wait a minute, the American family and the position of father, mother, daughter, son is tantamount to what God has in, in mind mm -hmm. for us as a nation. And so I went and I said, God, show me how to reverse this. And he gave me this whole statement, not just a statement, but a confession okay. for women to make together to reverse what was said through, I'm going to say deceived, because I don't believe, I do not believe that these women uh, b knew what was actually being done. I, I think that, uh, I don't think the devil were using women. I think uh, the devil was using women. I think, I, I don't think women were using evil. I mm -hmm. think evil was using okay. women to make a sound in the earth to destroy uh, God's position. Mm -hmm. And so with that, God gave me the reverse of it. And this is what I've been releasing to women, and maybe we can put this up on the screen. But this is what God had me to, to ask. I ask the question, and then the women give the answer. The question is, why are we here today? The answer, to make revolution. What kind of revolution? A righteous revolution. How do we do that? By restoring the American family. How do we restore the American family? By restoring God as father of this nation. How do we restore Father God in America? By taking back our authority in the name of Jesus and exercising our Holy Spirit power. How do we take back our authority and power? By using the name of Jesus and operating in our Holy Spirit power. How do we do that? By restoring righteousness. How do we restore righteousness? By worshiping our Father God in spirit and truth and filling ourselves up with the Holy Spirit and God's Word. How do we do that? By promoting righteousness, holiness, purity, and the supernatural miracle working power of God in our individual lives. And that statement, each one of those statements, is actually the reverse of what was said 50 years ago. Okay. And so that's why God said reverse it. Mm -hmm. um, many times we feel like we cannot make a difference, but our sound makes a difference. We have power mm -hmm. in our sound. And what the enemy has tried to do is silence us, not just as women, but as a people, a people of God. We've lost our influence in the nation. We've lost our influence in Washington. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, um, maybe we've presented the righteousness of God in such a way that um, it's not been accepted and acceptable. Um, God deserves the best. Mm -hmm. Every time we go to Disney, I think God should be getting this kind of worship. Mm -hmm. He should be getting this level yeah. of, of power being brought forth. And so many times I think um, we just offer God so much less and we wonder why we're not making a difference. Mm -hmm. So my heart is to gather women, to find their voice, to say the same thing in unity. We may not all be the same. Mm -hmm. We definitely aren't. Um, we don't all even believe some of the logistical parts of worship uh, may not be all the same, but God loves all of us. Uh, I asked him one time, I said, how do you deal with the Methodists and the Baptists and the Charismatics and the Catholics? And how, how do you deal with all these differences, God? We're so diversified. And I even said, God, your family's the most dysfunctional. And he laughed and he said, my kids are like ice cream, lots of flavors. And I love them all. Mm -hmm. And that made me think, you know what? We need to learn to love all the flavors of God. If we're vanilla, we should still love that salted caramel. Mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> or, yeah. or if you're chocolate, you should love strawberry because God loves us all, even in our diversity. And if we can come together with one common cause to rebuild this nation for the righteousness of God, I believe our sound will be unified and it will be powerful and we can make a difference. Mm -hmm. I really, I really like your statement. I really like that. Um, so let's look at, and I'm, a, I'm gonna go on this. I love how you're doing it for the, the women. And so you're talking about, um, kind of the transition of 50 years ago to now. Mm -hmm. So I see the difference in, in our generation, right. which a lot of people will say, well, you're this generation that we live in now 
has no spirituality, has no desire to go to church. And for me, I, I don't believe that that's completely true. No. Because, and people say, well, I've heard a couple of people say, well, God is changing with the times. No, God is the same yesterday, today, forever. That's right. The only thing that's changing is, is faith is changing. Because our generation is raised up in a generation of, of technology of, I have to see it to believe it. Right. Or people aren't, kids aren't attending church because, well, I can see it on my phone or mm -hmm. I can live stream it, which if that's your only ability, live streaming is great. Right. But if you have the ability to go to church and you say, no, I'd rather sit at home on Sunday mm -hmm. because I'm going to get just as fed. That's not true. Being in his presence, being in a house or surrounded by it where the anointing flows is completely different than being in your own home That's right. than being in his home. That's right. And see, the only thing for me is we have a greater task. If you're in my generation between the ages of, we'll say, 15 and 40, mm -hmm. the difference is that the devil is coming at us a little different. He's he's lost a few wars along the way. So he says, I'm going to strategize different against your generation. I'm going to say, seeing is believing, and I'm going to make it so easy for you not to be in the presence of God, not to be at his feet, not to have it. You don't need the faith because medicine heals now. Your God doesn't need to heal because medicine heals, or this or that or the other. That's really kind of blinded our eyes, but we need to see and stand firm in our word, the word of God, which is the truth, and we need to know that my God heals, my God takes care of me. I need to be surrounded by Him, not by all the distractions that are turning a blind eye to the truth and come back to Christ. So I love that for the women and I want this for the generation, that our generation needs to step up. Not for us rise up, we need to step up to the plate because we have this entitled mentality. Mm -hmm. Now I've, I've had a nice life <laughs> and a lot of things my mama did for me. And that made me entitled in some areas. And the Lord had spoke to me, you are too entitled in these areas and need to fix them because how can I get an entitled person to train the next generation behind us? How can I train my children if I have no idea how to do it for myself? Now that we're applying to faith. If you have no faith, how can I teach your children? How can you teach your children or I teach my children about faith, about walking with God when times are tough, about this is hard, about I'm sick, I don't feel good, I have no money, my life is crappy. Mm-hmm. How can I teach them that if I don't have the faith myself? If you don't put yourself out there, take your step like Peter did. Peter failed in walking on water. Right. And that's what people don't realize. He did fail. They say it's not, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. Okay, he finished failing. That's but right. he still took the step out there by faith and, and followed God. And we need to start that step. A lot of kids are afraid to fail. You need to get out there and see how far you're going to walk. Hey, he might have learned how to walk on water by sinking. You never know. <laughs> you know. We weren't there. Because we know this. He walked back to the boat. He did. Somehow he got back to that boat. So he did learn after he failed how to walk on water. He did. And see, that's where we need to go as a, as if you're watching this and you're between those ages or if you're just watching this and you're like, you know what, my, my faith kind of lacks for my, for my future or the future of others. You need to just take a little step out. One more step out of the boat. It's okay. The water's not that cold. That's You'll right. be fine because you'll be walking on top of the water. When you walk out in faith, God doesn't let you fail. That's right. So back that's exactly to the right. women. Um, how but I love this? that. How? I, I love that you went after your generation because that's what God spoke to me. He, he showed me the scripture in Acts where David reached his own generation, but he trained the next. Mm -hmm. And God spoke to me and he said, if you reach your own generation and you don't train the next, then everything you did dies with you. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want my entire life. I've already worked 60 years for the mm -hmm. kingdom of God. I don't want that to die with me. Mm -hmm. I want to know that I'm raising up a generation mm -hmm. that if the Lord tarries and I go to heaven ahead of you, if that happens, I want to make sure that you and Stephanie and Harry and Mia and, and Roman Jr., that you're ready. And, and you're not entitled. Mm -hmm. You are you are trained yes. to, to run the race. And and so I'm, I'm training. Now, part of, I think, what's happening with, with the women's conference is I feel like I'm training women and I'm mentoring a group of women right now so I can raise up a generation. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm happy and thrilled to see you and Stephanie stepping in and Harry stepping in and you're taking the, this by for, the violent or taking it by force mm -hmm. and you're violently going after your generation. For truth, I can only train you to go after your generation. Mm -hmm. And people say that, you know, people aren't going to church, but the truth is these young pastors 40 and under their churches are blowing and going mm -hmm. and so this generation is going to church it's a lie that they're not going to church mm -hmm. now they may not know how to walk by faith yet yeah. but they're learning because how do you learn to walk by faith 
by having to. Mm -hmm. You don't learn to walk by faith by reading it in a book. Mm -hmm. You learn to walk by faith by, by having by to. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Only one by way. having to yeah. walk by faith. That's yeah. right. That is good. So let's get let's get on to um, you ladies. And let's tell me the difference, though, um, because we do have the We Who Worship Conference. It's every year in June. Um, if you haven't signed up for this year, please go to our website, SalemFamilyMinistries.org. Yes. <laughs> and um, But do tell me the differences, because uh, the We Who Worship is a gathering of worshipers. Right. And so we, we have a gathering of, of women, right. but, um, you know, the We Who Worship, I know there's, we have music, we have ministry, we have minds, we have <laughs> That's right. the worship, we have so many things. What separates the two to say, oh, this is another Salem Family Conference? Well, over uh, 10 years ago, over a decade ago, because we're about to have our 10th mm -hmm. anniversary of We Who Worship gathering in June, the 21st, 22nd, 23rd uh, in 2018. And what that was, was a mandate from heaven to restore purity, holiness, and righteousness mm -hmm. in worship. Because worship um, got to be, and I am a worshiper, uh, and everyone who says you love God should say, I am a worshiper. That's a misnomer to say that worship is music because worship is not music. Mm -hmm. Worship is worshipers worshiping the Father God in every form of art possible. And that's what God showed me uh, many years ago is we're to take back every expression of worship, every expression of artistic ability, every expression of a skill or a talent or a gift should be used mm -hmm. in the throne room for the King of Kings. He deserves it. He gave that gift to the earth. Whether it be a mime, whether it be a musical theater, mm -hmm. whether it be a musician playing or a singer singing or a ballerina dancing or a hip hop dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, or um, we last year we had uh, these amazing uh, uh, Native American tribes come and dance. Remember, yeah. Just amazing. And, and God uh, really put it in my heart to gather all forms of expression. We have artists painting. Mm -hmm. uh, painting on canvas, one artist painting on shoes. I love it. And just every expression that we can gather and we give it back to the Father in a form of worship. And we use that, it's a three day uh, worship experience and we have intercession going on full time around the clock, uh, 24 hours, seven day, uh, three for three days. They just pray and pray and pray and, and it's a beautiful thing to see what God is doing there. Mm -hmm. So if you've never been to We Worship, come to our 10th anniversary and experience what God is doing in worship through you because you're a worshiper and you need to be involved in this. Okay. So that's different mm -hmm. than the women. Okay. Okay. And how do you become a part of your women's conference? Well, the beautiful thing about uh, womenofthenation.org, we are now building a website. We're not quite there yet. So if you go to womenofthenation.org, it's going to say this website's under construction. But this is an organization that God had me to launch Women of the Nation. The exact reverse of now is W-O-N, one. And we have one through the blood of Jesus Christ. You can go to uh, my Facebook page, to our Salem Family Ministries Facebook page, mm -hmm. and ask to become a member. In January, we will be actually launching the yearly memberships. Right now, we are uh, gathering our charter members. Okay. And uh, God told me to raise up Gideon's army. And the difference in the 32,000 that started with Gideon, mm -hmm. down to the 10,000, down to the 300, the difference was when they drank water, they were always watching. They were always looking. The ones that got down and put their face in the water, God said, I don't need them. They're not watching and praying. I, and those that got down on their knees and started laughing like this, mm -hmm. but they were looking, that's the ones he was looking for. And so these are the women I'm looking for, not entitled women, mm -hmm. but women who are willing to lay down their lives to fight for Jesus Christ. We have won. So if you want to be a part of that, watch our website. The next conference dates will be up very soon. Uh, we are actually negotiating right now with the location on that. So uh, we will have two a year in the West, but I just had a uh, ask this morning. I had a uh, one lady ask me, could we do an, a Southern branch in Alabama? And so we will, we will be having a conference there. I've already had someone ask me in Michigan if we could have a northern one there. So I'd like to be able to say we're launching these all over the nation. So just be watching. Thanks, watch our Salem Family Ministries Facebook page. Watch our website, SalemFamilyMinistries.org. And you'll be seeing more and more about this. That's great. If you guys liked our interview today, feel free to give us a like. A thumbs up. Mm -hmm. If you're not subscribed to this and you just found it on YouTube or someone suggested it to you, liked what you saw, 
feel free to subscribe. All you do is hit the subscribe button. Every time we come out with a new video, you'll be sent that new video. Don't give us a thumbs down or my son will cry hysterically. <laughs> so only thumbs up. I will too. If you want to go to our website at salemfamilyministries.org, you can see where Harry and Cheryl are going to be at um, across mm -hmm. the next couple months. Under so our schedule. if you're remember. not in the California area, which is where we're based out of, um, or if you are, if you're in a different state, you and you want to attend one of their Sunday morning or Wednesday night services, you can look on our website, and then you can attend one of the great services. That's right. And Probably better somewhere... than the interview that we had, oh. but I highly doubt it. <laughs> no, it's true. So. And we're somewhere every weekend, and uh, you are out preaching, Harry's out preaching, mm -hmm. uh, Harry and I are out preaching, so you need to come and see us. 